and I now give the floor to His Excellency Kyo Tint Sui, Union Minister for the Office of the State Councillor of Myanmar. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, we live in challenging times. This year's theme, making the United Nations relevant to all people, global leadership and shared responsibility for peaceful, equitable, and sustainable society is therefore most appropriate. It serves to remind us of the need to strengthen the role of this important organization to overcome the complex challenges we face today. In this process, we must not forget the core principles of the UN Charter, including the principle of sovereign equality. It is also important to remember that the promotion of economic, social, cultural, and humanitarian interests, as well as the promotion and protection of human rights and fundamental freedoms are to be attained through international cooperation. Nor should we forget the international character of the United Nations. It is only through constructive and peaceful approaches that we will be able to create a better United Nations one that is relevant to all nations. Only then can our hopes for global leadership of shared responsibilities become a reality. Here, I wish to stress Myanmar's view on the role of the United Nations remain unchanged. There is no suitable multilateral platform other than the United Nations for countries of the world to work together to find solutions to overcome global challenges. Mr. President, let me apprise this August Assembly of our efforts to transform Myanmar from an authoritarian system to a democratic one. Our efforts to bring about sustainable development and to build a society where stability, peace, and harmony prevailed. A country without peace and stability cannot achieve economic development. This is our conviction. Accordingly, our democratically elected government has given priority to national reconciliation and peace since we assume office. Mr. President, we are convinced that ethnic strife and armed conflicts in Myanmar can only be ended through political means. Lasting peace will become a reality only when the democratic federal union to which our people aspired is established. We are therefore conducting negotiations at the Union Peace Conference, the 21st century Penlong, to reach agreement on fundamental principles for a democratic federal union. The three sessions of the conference held so far has adopted 51 fundamental principle, which will become part of the Union Peace Accord. To ensure that the process is inclusive, we continue negotiations, not only with the eight ethnic armed groups that have signed the nationwide ceasefire agreement, NCA, but also with those that have yet to come on board. During the past year, Two more ethnic armed groups, namely the new Mon State Party and the Laho Democratic Union, joined the peace process by signing the NCA. We will continue our endeavors to bring all ethnic armed organizations under the NCA umbrella and to the conference table. Mr. President, essential to our endeavors to bring peace and prosperity to the nation is the need to ensure balanced development in the economic, social, and environmental atmospheres. 
To this end, the government has laid down the Myanmar Sustainable Development Plan, MSDP 2018 to 2030, which is in accord with the United Nations 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda. Among its important goals are peace, national reconciliation, security, and good governance. The success of MSDP requires not only national endeavors, but also the involvement and commitment of development partners and international organizations. Mr. President, human rights and inclusiveness are fundamental to the successful transformation of Myanmar into a democratic society. The government has spared no efforts in nurturing democratic norms and practices among all its citizens. These efforts include the promotion of the rule of law, good governance, and protection of human rights, and the fostering of the civil society. All these are essential for the emergence of a democratic federal union in which the security and prosperity of all citizens are assured. It is a supremely challenging task, particularly for a fledging democracy. However, Myanmar is strong in its resolution to build the democratic society to which our people aspire. Mr. President, resolving the issue in Rakhine is an important component of our democratic process. Our government has consistently exerted all efforts to bring peace and development to Rakhine. Within weeks of the assumption of responsibilities of the state, the government set up the Central Committee for Implementation of Peace, Stability, and Development of Rakhine State in May 2016 under the chairmanship of State Councillor Do Aung San Suu Kyi. This was followed by the establishment of the Advisory Commission on Rakhine in September 2016, headed by the late Dr. Kofi Annan, former Secretary General of the United Nations, to provide recommendations for bringing peace, stability, and development to the Rakhine state. I wish at this point to pay tribute to Dr. Kofi Annan, who, with his immense wisdom, has provided us with recommendations in his desire to, for us to reach our goal of peace, prosperity, and security. Mr. President, barely a month after the Advisory Commission was established, an extremist terrorist group called Akamul Mujahideen, later renamed the Arakan Rohingya Salvation Army, Artsa, launched attacks on three border police posts in northern Rakhine State. The attacks were premeditated, well organized, and designed to invoke fear among the inhabitants, to incite violence, and to attract international attention. The government, despite the attacks, continued with its efforts to seek sustainable solution for Rakhine. The Advisory Commission presented its final report to the government of Myanmar in August 2017. It contains 88 recommendations towards achieving lasting peace and stability in Rakhine. We have set up an implementation committee, and I'm happy to report that we are now implementing 81 out of the 88 recommendations made by the Commission. Within hours of the release of the Advisory Commission's final report, our sir terrorists carried out simultaneous attack on 30 police outposts and one army battalion headquarters. Here, it must be stressed that the ARSA attack of 2017 were not only against security forces, but also against various communities inhabiting Rakhine State. The attack opened a chapter of fear and instability and led to a large outflow of refugees to Bangladesh. 
international attention has been focused on the outflow and overlooked the broader picture of the various reasons, immediate as well as long-standing, that brought about the displacement of these people. Nevertheless, the government has persisted in its sincere effort to address as a whole the need for stability, reconciliation and development of all communities in Rakhine. Mr. President, we sympathize deeply with these displaced persons, especially women and children, and have taken steps to affect the early repatriation of all displaced persons from Rakhine who are verified as residents of the state. To that end, we have signed with Bangladesh three bilateral agreements. We have made necessary preparations in line with this bilateral agreement and have been ready to receive verified returnees from Bangladesh since 23rd January of this year. We call on Bangladesh to fulfill its commitments in accordance with the bilateral agreement to allow, without delay, the return of verified persons under voluntary, safe, and dignified conditions. A number of people had returned of their own volition and under their own arrangement. They have been systematically registered, processed, and are now with their own relatives and family in their own homes. However, not even a single displaced person have been repatriated by Bangladesh as part of the implementation of the bilateral agreement. Mr. President, the only way to resolve the issue swiftly and peacefully is through the implementation of bilateral agreements. Working together in the spirit of good neighborliness, refraining from activities that might be inimical to the national interests of either Myanmar or Bangladesh. We recognize the crucial role of the United Nations in addressing the issue of Rakhine. Accordingly, the government of Myanmar signed a MOU with UNDP and UNHCR for assisting the speedy and efficient resettlement and rehabilitation of the returnees. The UN team has started this process and we are looking forward to their feedback. Mr. President, the Myanmar government has expressed its serious concern over the report published on 27 August 2018 by the Human Rights Council's fact-finding mission on Myanmar. From the very beginning, Myanmar objected to the formation of the fact-finding mission. Due to our government's serious and joining concerns about the advisability of its establishment, composition, and mandate. At a time when we are working hard to build harmony on the ground, we are concerned that the release of this report based on narratives and not on hurt evidence, and I repeat, based on narratives and not on hurt evidence, will only serve to inflame tensions further and potentially hinder our efforts to create a much needed social cohesion in Rakhine. Here, I would like to stress what accountability should mean to all of us. Accountability should mean taking responsibility for one's action. Accountability must apply equally to all, individuals, organizations, national governments, as well as multilateral organizations must be held responsible for the consequences of their words and actions. Mr. President, as you will also be aware, the government of Myanmar has resolutely rejected ICC's ruling of 6 September 2018 in connection with the Rakhine State. Our position is clear. Myanmar is not a party to the Rome Statute and the court has no jurisdiction over Myanmar whatsoever. The ICC decision was made on dubious legal grounds and applied to a situation 
where domestic remedies have not yet been exhausted. I speak to all representatives today when I say that we, members of the international community, should be deeply concerned by the recent decision of ICC and the various precedent that the court may be setting by this recent ruling, as well as the way in which it was made. Such action can only erode the moral and legal authority of the court. We are hurtened that we are not alone in having grave misgiving about ICC. Mr. President, please also let me make it clear. While the government is unable to accept this legally dubious intervention by the ICC, we are fully committed to ensure accountability where there is concrete evidence of human rights violation committed in Rakhine State. We have recently established an independent commission of inquiry. The commission will investigate all violations of human rights and atrocities committed in Rakhine State as part of our effort to address the issue of accountability reconciliation, peace, stability, and development in our country. The Independent Commission of Inquiry is chaired by Madame Rosalio Manalo, former Deputy Foreign Minister of the Philippines, and comprises Ambassador Kenzo Oshima, former Japanese Permanent Representative to the UN and Under Secretary General of the United Nations, and two Myanmar nationals, one of whom is the former Chairman of the Constitutional Tribunal, and the other, a former senior official of UNICEF. We hope that alongside the Rakhine Advisory Commission's recommendations, the work of the Independent Commission of Inquiry will become an important guiding light for the resolution of problems in Rakhine State. Mr. President, the challenges facing Myanmar are complete, complex and multifaceted. However, the people of Myanmar are resilient. We stand united to face all obstacles and to meet all challenges as we strive to bring peace, development, and national harmony to our country that have suffered for decades of conflict, underdevelopment, and disharmony. I thank you for your attention. I thank the Union Minister for the Office of the State Councillor of Myanmar for his statement. And I now give the floor to His Excellency Goodlagur Thor Thordarson, 